Hi, Inez Barbario here, and welcome back to another episode of Core Growth Strategies, Positivity and Success Stories. I met my guest last year when I had the pleasure of being on his podcast. After an insightful discussion on all things positive, I knew right away that the universe had our paths crossed for a reason. Naturally, I asked him to be a guest on my show. Former Navy, daddy-to-be, and the host of the Christoph Lewis podcast, I am happy to have Christoph Lewis himself as my guest to discuss all things positive and the power of giving back. Hello, Christoph. Thank you for joining me tonight. So nice to see you again. Hey, Inez, it's super good to see you again. I was so excited to be on the opposite end after you were a guest on my podcast, and I couldn't be more excited to be on yours as well. (laughs) I know. We had such a good vibe when I was on your podcast. I had so much fun, and you made it so easy, and I felt that we flowed very well. And being the fact that you and I are both, like, started the same type of project together without even knowing each other, it made it, like, even more fun. Yeah, that's what's super fun about this. And I was just telling you, I recorded with somebody else earlier this week, and it's so fun to be able to reciprocate what you're getting from the other side. So he was starting a podcast. I wanted to help him, and Mm -hmm. I may have him on the podcast later. And then you were on my podcast. I'll be on (laughs) yours and about helping each other while helping other people at the same time. And that's what I really love about this community of networking and just helping ourselves while we're helping other people. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I first started this, I was amazed by the um, how many people were willing to like jump on in and help out. That's pretty interesting, huh? You know, whether it's like giving me advice on the technical side from people who are very experienced doing this to being a guest on the show. It's been a really great experience thus far. It is a really great experience. And you learn things that you never thought you'd learn before. I mean, I didn't even intend to create a podcast when I created the podcast. I didn't, I just intended to have a conversation with my friend that trades stocks, who was my first conversation. And then I was like, well, this is really fun and it's getting good feedback. So let's keep on doing this. And then here I am. So like I've talked before about, well, how do you find your passion? That's like a huge thing that I do, at least on my podcast. And Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you may already be doing it and not know that you're doing it. Like, like I was with recording conversations and it's just funny how things work out. And then you meet people like yourself. And then because I met you, I met a plethora of other people and it just keeps on going. And you're like, wow, people really want to do this and people really want to help. So let's continue talking to people and see where it goes. I agree. I mean, I started this personally because I just felt there was, I mean, I'm in, I have a media background yet. There's so much negativity in the media and kind of like, you know what? I want to hear the good stories. I, I know there's, inspirational, positive people out there with great success stories that people don't know about. And I was yeah. using, I decided to use this platform as an ability to share it. And like you said, you start realizing like there's so many of us who are out there to support and empower. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point that you made is that I was sickened even as a child growing up and seeing the news. I was absolutely mortified by the amount of negativity that was portrayed on the television or the news or the radio just because it got the listeners or it got the viewers. And I was yeah. like, it, 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 it kind of forces, especially, and I'm saying this as a child growing up. So it like, you are growing up thinking that, wow, maybe there is only this negativity out everywhere and everybody's negative and there's always just war and it's bad, bad, bad. And people are dying and these terrible yeah. things are happening, but that's not how it is. Those things do happen. But yeah. I mean, we really are living in the safest time in the history of human ever there's just still bad stuff that's going to happen but Mm -hmm. at the same time we need to do this so that we can show that there are good things happening as well out there there are good people out there there are very very good people out there and unfortunately well and i think we're on the rise too because podcasts are a huge thing in the last few years you know three four five six seven years podcasts have been growing exponentially Mm -hmm. so i think a lot of people that like you and me we're just sick of it yeah we're sick all the negativity. We're sick of people not doing what they want to do in life. We're sick of all the negativity being portrayed all around us everywhere. And so we're going out for ourselves. Like you have a little bit of background, but a point I want to make to other people, like I had no background in this. Like I figured it out. I had some good people that were in my life that helped me figure out some of the stuff along the way. But if you really want to go out there and you want to make an impact, you absolutely can make an impact by yourself. And then you're connecting with people like yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, 
with social media, there's so much positivity that comes out of it because we are able to connect with like-minded people. I, I it's, it's amazing yeah. how many people reach out to me from all over the world, you know, who are searching for something good. And they're and they'll be like, Oh, we love, like, it could just be like one little quote I write and they're happy to hear an inspirational or positive message. Yeah. Crazy. Or if I share something personal that, you know, wasn't great that happened to me, then they can relate. Oh my gosh, you know what? I felt this, something similar happened to me as well. It's nice to know that I could connect with someone on that issue. Yeah. Social media makes it easy. I talk about it a lot because it comes up a lot organically on and off the podcast in, in my life. And I was talking to somebody else the other day. I was like, yeah, I'm on social media all the time. And it's not like I'm wasting my time. Like I use right. it for business because it makes so easy. It makes it so easy to talk to other people. It makes, I mean, <laughs> on Instagram where I get a lot of the guests that I get is, you know, you can direct message people, people have their emails on there and then other people not even relating to that just in general. If you want to network with like-minded people, like you said, yeah. it's very easy. I mean, obviously that's what hashtags are, but if yeah. you utilize these things and you really want to see good then you can see good really easy and then you can network. I mean, you follow the people like I've talked about eliminating negativity from your life, like stop unfollowing the people yeah, that post negative simple. stuff you know, and regardless of what it is, it, it is that simple because mm -hmm. if you're seeing that stuff repeatedly through your life, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that is what you're going to think all the time. Like I'm in a very, very, very important stage of my life right now where I'm trying to mitigate as much negativity as I can from my life, not yeah. even just from the outside world, but from negative self-talk that I'm mm -hmm. trying to catch myself doing. So if I'm trying to catch myself from not talking bad about myself, even inadvertently, like not even something you think would be very bad. Like, I hope I can do this or I hope I can post yeah. many podcasts. I can post this many podcasts. I will post this many podcasts. So yeah. if I'm struggling with that myself, then you're sure as hell not going to see me following negative people because oh, absolutely. it's just going to bleed into what I'm doing. And I, I can't, I just can't have it. It's too important for me. Mm -hmm. to eliminate that stuff mm -hmm. from my life to see other people doing that like that. So going back on my newsfeed, it's all positive. And if I see somebody with, you know, who gets into that whole, I mean, it seems like politics are what really drives people into that. Yeah, negative fear. yeah absolutely. And I just either mute or unfollow because I, I don't need to be involved in it. I don't need to see it. I, I know what's happening in the world, but I choose to focus on the good stuff. That's simple. Yeah, you do have to choose. To, it is a decision. And I'm glad you said it is a decision. Mm -hmm. And I think that people may think, well, it's just my news feed. I'm just glancing over it. Yeah. But I, I swear to you, the fact that you're seeing it as you're scrolling, it's still getting implanted in your head. And subconsciously, you may be thinking about it later. So I'm just talking about completely. I, I can only tell you what I do. And I completely take it out myself because I don't even want to look over it for a second. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So let's um, dive into a little bit more about your personal life <laughs> in let's terms of, it. well, you were in the military, you know, we're talking about politics. So let's just kind of transcend yeah. into the military. So you were in the Navy. Could you tell us a little I bit? Was. Yeah, absolutely. So I was in the Navy for nine years. Mm -hmm. I joined not right out of high school, like a lot of people do. Yeah. I did a couple of years of college. College wasn't for me. Formal mm -hmm. education really has never been a part of my life that I've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I joined the Navy. I wanted to do something bigger than myself. I wanted to do something that gave me a consistent paycheck and that I enjoyed. And that when I got out of the Navy, if I so chose to do so, that I'd have a job that would, um, or I would learn skills that would help me get a job back on the outside again, whenever that time may come. And it came just last year, nine years later, and I had a great time. I worked some Naval Special Warfare for about half of my tenure there, and then I kind of uh, let it fade out a little bit and just got ready to, ha I wanted to have a family. So I got mm -hmm. out of the Navy just recently, you know, we're expecting, we were talking about that. Yeah. But I absolutely love the Navy, and it taught me so much about leadership, about the friends I had in my life, mm. how to be led as well. Yes. It taught me so many things and how to handle situations under stress. So the Navy really, for me at least, helped me to evolve as a person and really help evolve into who I knew I always wanted to be. I, was, I wasn't like a bad person, but I was very selfish. And there was a lot of things about me that I didn't really care to be. And I was even cognizant of it, but it was hard for me to change because I was so dang selfish. Yeah. But 
having the responsibility that I had in the Navy mm -hmm. really helped me overcome these things as, soon, as long as I made the decision. You know, you have to be self-aware of these things first. And I always was self-aware, but I was either too lazy or, like I said, too selfish about wanting to change. But my time in the Navy, almost a decade in the Navy, really helped evolve this, put me in a lot of high-stress situations where I just had to perform and I had to eliminate emotions, act quickly, act rationally. Uh -huh. And I, it was in the Navy that I actually found that I wanted to help people. I, uh -huh. I loved being in leadership positions. Uh -huh. I loved mentoring people. I loved being mentored and being, you know, learning from other people. So all of these things I was able to acquire in the Navy that one would be able to acquire outside of the Navy, of course, and, and some sort of similar organization potentially. But I know that there are definitely some unique situations that I experienced that you can only experience within the military. And those definitely not only made me a better leader, a better follower, mm -hmm. but they made me appreciate my life more. Right. I, I and I, I talk about it literally every single every single day of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I wake up. I'm thankful to wake up out of bed. Yeah. I'm thankful to be able to hit the snooze button. I get up. I meditate for five minutes. I sit in gratitude for five minutes, and then I just think about all my goals for the day for yeah. five minutes. I do all these things within you know about twenty minutes, and that's how I start my day. And it uh -huh. goes all the way back to my time in the Navy. Oh, incredible! Because I'm thankful. I know some people, a lot of people, a lot of men and women don't get the opportunity to come home. And mm -hmm. I'm very grateful. And I, and I said, I've said it before. And a lot of people may be like, well, <laughs> you know, I, is it really, are you taking it overboard just by be thankful for that? Be thankful for all these things. And absolutely not. You yeah. know, I, I think that a lot of things are created through experience and my experiences have definitely made me more appreciative for life. And you can still be appreciative for life, you yeah. know, without having to go through tragedy and everything. But I, I do know it's, it's definitely exacerbates in a, you know, in a very good way, this mm -hmm. passion for life, which I am now uh, trying to give back to the world around me. And that all started in the Navy and I'm carrying it on outside of the Navy as well now. Well, that's great. And Everything you said kind of ties into emotional intelligence, which is my baby. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and yep. We're talking about self-awareness and helping others and gratitude and, you know, um, meditation, all of that embodies, you know, they're all components of emotional intelligence. And I, I start my day off exactly the same way. <laughs> it's funny, you know, gratitude. I, I, I'm thankful I'm just so for that. And, you know, um, we, we, we tend in life and I, I think I read this quote just the other day, you know, waking up every day, you know, that that's a blessing. And we wait for these special occasions, you know, to do things. Guess what? Life is a special occasion. Like we're, we're here right now. Celebrate yeah. it. Be happy. Yeah. And, you know, we're such, our minds are so wired, unfortunately. And it's not because people wanted to do it that way, because a lot of it comes from our growing up. You know, we're wired yeah. to see the negative things. We're wired to be told, to be labeled. Like, you know, this is what you have to do. You know, you, Absolutely. And, and I come, I mean, you say you're not, you know, you, academics wasn't for you. <clears throat> I came from a very academic background. Like, there was just no question that, you know, I would go to college. My kids would go to college. I, yeah. And I did well. I was a straight-A student. You know, I went, I, I, I got my um, undergrad. I actually had my son young during my freshman year in college. So I took a little break. But when I went back, you know, I, I finished my college. And then I went and got my master's. However, it, it's funny when I say this, but I think that like the emotional well-being of ourselves, of our children is so much more important than academics. And mm -hmm. the most that I've learned in life is not from a textbook. It's not from school. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. That's kind of like where I was going with being in the Navy. And I, I mean, I had plenty of schools while I was in the Navy. Right. Exactly. I tell you, without a doubt, all those experiences that I had mm -hmm. with friends, mentors, all those experiences, those hardships that I went through made me who I am today. And that's really the reasons. Those are the reasons why I see the world as it is. And the thing going back to college, you mm -hmm. know, I think, you know, I have my own reservations about it, but I think however you learn best is right. what you should do. 
you want to be a scholar in that sense and go to, mm -hmm. you know, formal, quote unquote, formal education, then please do, especially if what you want to pursue requires it. But I yeah. know I was told that I wouldn't get certain places in life, like in my own example right here in my life right now, I was told I wouldn't get the job I have now at company XYZ because mm. I didn't have a college degree. People in the Navy told right. me that across the board, a hundred percent of people told yeah. me I wouldn't do it, Chris, I would not do it. Cause you don't have a college degree. You shouldn't apply for this job. And I got the job because I related all these experiences I had in the Navy and I was able to articulate myself in the manner of being like, I know I don't have it on the paper here, but I'm right. willing to learn. And I love learning. And that's mm -hmm. another point is I, it's so, it's almost sad to me to realize like growing up, going through school, high school, college, I couldn't stand it. Like I was saying, but yeah. when I got into the Navy and I got a little bit more settled, I started to realize that I love to learn. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love learn. I love to read, love to listen to podcasts, all mm -hmm. these things that were targeted towards things that interested me. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. Like I could not relate to going to a college course and just learning prerequisites that I had to, that wasn't for me. And if I've learned anything over me doing nine months of podcasting is that everybody learns completely different and everybody is successful because of a different route that they take in life. Absolutely. And we should find that for ourselves and then just ride it hard, like into the sunset. And mm -hmm. I knew that that formalized education wasn't very, it, it wasn't bringing out the best in me. Right. So the things that I'm doing now, like studying for literally studying how to create a better podcast, studying how to build a business out of the podcast. There's so mm -hmm. many ways that you can take it, but these things are, I enjoy. So I'll be doing, you'll find me doing it on my lunch break. You'll be finding me doing it in bed. When I go to bed, you'll all the time when I come home from work and I enjoy these things. And if I would have, you know, studied that much for a college course, I would have, you know, <laughs> got on. So it's just finding what you really enjoy to do. And then just yeah. going the hard. If, if that's truly your passion, what you want to be in pursuit of. Absolutely. I mean, you're right. Like you said, you're working even more now and nobody's telling you to do it. Like you're doing exactly. it because you want to, you found your passion and you oh, want to, you want to do the best job you can of it. And you're going to continue to learn how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's not work to me. It's, it's really fun. I like, we are talking about, you know, we both edit podcasts and obviously that's <laughs> something we like. I want to lessen the time I edit. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. It just means I want to be able to put more content out there, but I do. Yeah. I love being able to, look at my podcast again and listen to my podcast and learn even more from my guests that I may have missed during mm -hmm. the recording and I can improve yeah. on myself. And it's like, I'm watching the game footage of myself and I'm able to like, well, I need to improve on that. I need to not say things that way. Oh my gosh, I inadvertently cut her off or whatever it is. These are things that I do not mind. And I spend hours a day doing them, but I love doing them. So I, I just, the reason I do what I do in my life is because I want other people to find these things that they don't see as work, they see as things that potentially, you know, they get compensated for or just things that they enjoy doing. I, I firmly believe that you don't need to do something. You don't need to do a job in your life that you, you don't enjoy a job that you're just a zombie getting up every day, going to work, coming home, going to sleep. Like to me, that's both sad and terrifying. And yeah. that's why we're doing what we're doing. And you're right, it does relate back to emotional intelligence because it starts all up here. If you haven't made up your mind to do these things, if you haven't been self-aware to realize that maybe there are even issues here, if you can't check your ego and be able to talk to somebody about it, like I was talking to somebody today about the podcast. He said he enjoyed it. He listened to it for the first time. I was so, so thankful for it. But my first question after he finished telling me was that, in all honesty, please tell me what I can improve on. Yeah. And he told me which is great. Yeah. You need to be asked these questions. Not I relate the podcast as an example, but in your life. Like, so maybe with my wife, like I want to be a better husband. Yes. So I go talk to her, maybe we get in an argument and I just don't feel right about it. I don't think you ever do, but mm -hmm. I don't feel right about it. So I'm like, you know, after the dust is maybe settled a little bit, I'm like, baby, what did I, in, in all honesty, please tell me on how I can improve now that maybe the dust is settled, the emotions are running as high and we can rationally kind of mm -hmm. reconstruct, but you have to have the communication. So communication yeah. is huge and mm -hmm. being able to take the feedback as well. And yeah. then being able to 
apply that to your life because you can't just obviously have all these intentions of being a better husband or a better wife or mm -hmm. working harder at the job you want. You have to actually act on it. And that's setting, like you, as you said, that's setting your ego aside. You know, yeah. and it's a hard thing to do when you've lived with that ego on your shoulder your whole life. But when you find the courage to do so, you see how much better your life becomes. Yeah, it is. You do need courage. Mm -hmm. It is tough. Yeah. It's all these things. And I will say that it is tough in the beginning until mm -hmm. you make up your mind that you're going to do it regardless. Mm -hmm. Inez, when I first started getting up at quarter to five in the morning, 4.45 in the morning, I get up every morning now and I don't snooze. What? I'm okay. telling you, when I, it was tough. It was very tough. Yeah. But when I made up my mind mm -hmm. that I was going to do it regardless of anything, if I don't care how tired I was, what yeah. was going on, I was going to get up so I can do the things I'm about to tell you. Okay. Now, then it became easy. So I would say, now that I know that for sleep, which is super crucial to me, and I absolutely love much like anybody. Now that I know that I can conquer one of the hardest things and honestly snoozing and getting up that early was, I can conquer that. I get up no problem now and I'm less tired during the day because I made up my mind that I'm going to get up and I'm going to do these things and I'm going to go to work and I'm going to come back and work on my podcast and work on my business. Mm -hmm. and these are the things I'm and these are non-negotiables. It is non-negotiable that I'm going to get up at this time. Non-negotiable that I'm going to not snoop. All of these things. So once I made up my mind, it was easy, which now is not even bad because I'm in the routine of doing it. And it all started with me waking up and not snoozing and making the decision in my head that this was a non-negotiable thing and I was going to do it. Because if I failed this one little thing in the morning, mm -hmm. Everything else is going to be out of sync. I, I'm not. I'm gonna, not even going to be able to give gratitude correctly because I'm upset that I I mm -hmm. snoozed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to not. My head's not going to be in the right place at the gym. I'm not going to get a workout in that I like and not a good workout in. I may be messed up. It just the whole day is messed up, and it all goes back to that little, little, little time in my life at 4:45 a.m. every morning. That's very inspiring. <laughs> I got to tell you, as you're speaking, I'm thinking, oh gosh, I'm complaining about getting up at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and it just like, this is how I've constructed my life and I have it. So like, I'm a planner. I don't know if it's me or the military anymore. And it may be a little bit of both, but I have an yeah. Excel sheet. I have yeah. my, and this is going to laugh. It's a quote from the show, The Office. But okay. I have this brain hurricane instead of a, a brainstorm. I have this, it's so silly, but I try to just have fun in life too. But I have this brain hurricane where I sit down every Sunday at mm -hmm. the same time. I fill out my week on an Excel sheet and I plan it down to the minute. Yeah. yeah. And well, that's going to help come very helpful when the baby comes too. <laughs> and, and you know what? And I've talked about that a lot. It's going to be yeah. extremely tough. I'm going to have to be flexible. I'm going to mm -hmm. have to do things completely out of whack that don't fit into my schedule but right. I've already made up my mind that I'm going to be a good father I already made up yeah. my mind that I'm going to be the best husband I can be and I've mm -hmm. already made up my mind that I will find the time to do this I have edited it on lunch at work before and I will do it again like I will <laughs> find time to do it where I can do it when I can yeah. do it and I think it just goes back to making up your mind that if you want to do something you can do it and I am just saddened again I think too many people mm -hmm. sell themselves or you are capable of so much more. Make up your mind to do it. Set some goals. Lift them up a little bit more than you think, than you've already set these goals, and then go after those. Well, a part of what, and me included, what kept me from hold, holding me back so much in my life, and being, I mean, I used to work in, um, after I had the second one, I became a stay-at-home mom. But prior to that, I worked in corporate world, which I hated. I hated yeah. I mean, I would get physically ill. I worked in New York City. I, I go to these offices and work 12 hours to people that were ungrateful and thought that like, you know, I, I worked uh, selling men's and women's underwear. And it was like, oh my God, that was the most important thing in the world. <laughs> That's how I felt. And I was just, I mean, I literally got myself sick because I just was so not happy. Yeah. I was given the opportunity, thank God, you know, to, to be able to get out of it and change careers later on in life. But 
looking back, part of it was just like that fear mindset of like, well, this is a really good job. I get paid lots of money to yeah. do. I have a good title. You're, you know? Were you comfortable? Uh, what financially you mean? Well, uh, well, what? yes, that's, that's one way. Uh, but you were, were you just, you were comfortable. You didn't really have, you didn't really have anything that you needed to do something different, right? You were like, you were working the job. I paid the right. bills. And that's it. You know, and I, I think that's, and I, I'm just like thinking as you're talking, and I think that's like one of the many reasons that people don't do what they want, you know, fear of failure, feel of, mm-hmm. fear of how they look in front of their family and their friends and just oh, yeah. the world. But I think it's also because we're stuck in this comfortable plateau of life where we can, you know, we can pay our bills, we can, you know, maybe go on a vacation a year or every two years or whatever, and, you know, right. we can pay to feed ourselves and our family. And that's great. You know, there's millions, hundreds of millions of people that don't do that in the world every day. Like you said, there's nothing wrong with living comfortably if you are comfortable with it. (laughs) You know, but if you have this nagging feeling in your side saying, oh, God, I know I'm, you know, I'm destined for something better. I want something more. It's letting go of that fear and going after what you want. And like with you, I mean, here you are. You're still working. You know, you have a job nine to five job. Yeah. I mean, not those exact hours, however, but you're also building, <laughs> you're building exactly what you want too for yourself and your family. Yeah, you have to. And yes, I am doing the podcast for many reasons, but everything that I do, not only for myself and for my family is geared towards getting time back in my life. Hmm. So I'm willing to sacrifice without a doubt hmm. all the long hours now so that yeah. later in my life, I can have that passive or residual income that Mm. will be able to, you know, I can afford to have the time with my family. I mean, that's, I, you don't want to work. You don't want to put your time in and then get money back from the time you put in. Like that's what I'm doing right now during the day. I don't want that. You don't need to have the money work for you. So you have the time to spend with your family, to do the things you want to do because Mm -hmm. time is the, you know, obviously time is the only thing you can't get more of unless Mm -hmm. you take, you know, you can take care of your body too. And that's a whole other, another conversation. And that's why I choose to go to the gym every day, but, mm-hmm. and, and be healthy because I want to have that longevity to be able to live a long life for my family and with my family. Oh, agreed. And that's something that I try and teach my kids to, well, the ones older, but the younger one, I, I I'm bored is not allowed to be said in this home. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way you could be bored. You live a privileged life. You know, we, you travel, there's so (laughs) many amazing things you can do, you know, even as a 13 year old child. And you know, you mentioned it earlier when we first started speaking, you know, we live in an amazing time right now. There's so many opportunities that we can take advantage of. We just have to look for it and go after it. Yeah. And I tell you, I was that kid too. I mean, I was a teenage boy too. I, I was experiencing a lot of times where I was bored as well, truly. And yeah. now I would die to be in the situation where I thought I was bored because I would, I would kill for that time. But I'm glad that I'm not bored ever, obviously. Right. Uh-huh. That means I'm allocating my time correctly and do that. And if you're at a point where you're bored in your life, I don't know, maybe you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody's listening to this, they're like, well, I'm bored. Does that make me a crappy person? No. Uh-huh. And if you're okay with that, but if you want to better yourself and if you want to be a better person, if you want to live a healthier life, if you want to have a better job and you're bored mm-hmm. then you're doing the wrong thing and there's no easy way to, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you yeah. because it, you don't want, you don't want somebody, you don't want me telling you something that sugarcoat it. You need to hear what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I'm going yeah. to tell you mm-hmm. what you need to. Hear. So if you're bored and you want to better yourself, You better fill that space and time really quick with something. Get online, get on YouTube, get on Google. Like we're talking about with social media, it's too easy to get done what you want to get done now. You're still going to have to put all the hard work in, but you can fill that time up real quick with, I mean, you could do anything on YouTube. You could Google like all these things, go out there and network. (laughs) Anything. And I didn't know I've interviewed almost 50 people now. Like I didn't know any of them and they've taught me, everybody's taught me, I can't even tell you how many things and I you know this is stuff I wasn't even on YouTube, but now it is because I wanted to learn some things. So go start a YouTube channel for, for whatever you like. If you want to better yourself, you better 
not have that time just where you don't, you're twiddling your thumbs, like read a book, Mm -hmm. you know, study up on something, maybe learn how to invest, do something that's going to fill that time if you want to be better. Absolutely. So I want to hear more about, all right, so you told me how you started your podcast, which was by accident, it sounds like, right? You were just kind of talking to a friend? It kind of was. So it goes all the way back to December of 2017, where I did a, like a live webinar Uh teaching how to people to technically analyze stock charts. And it had a really good feedback. And I was like, this is kind of fun. I suck at it, but it's kind of fun. (laughs) And you know what I'm going to have, I'm going to do like a recorded one because it had less latency and it looked better. So I'm going to do a recorded one with a friend of mine uh-huh. and let's do it. And I posted it and it got good feedback. And I, it's funny because I posted it as number one, uh-huh. not as this is just the title, but uh-huh. number one, out of you know, whatever. Yeah. So I think I knew that already that I wanted to do them. And I remember talking to my wife, Jordan, yeah. even what, in the column, you know, and she gave me the name conversations and I called them conversations because just like we're having, yeah, that's, that's all. So I had conversation number one uh-huh. uh, recorded months later, just stocks. And then I just, you know, had friends and family on it for the first nine episodes. And we were just, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about anything under the sun that's going to show somebody that like going back to what we were talking about, about people maybe being stuck in the place, but show people that they can literally do whatever they want, that what makes you happy, there's somebody out there probably doing it right now. Yeah. And maybe it doesn't even exist. Cause I know for a fact I had Swayze Valentine on and she's the first cut woman in the UFC. There wasn't oh, wow. a cut woman before she made it happen. Like she, she yeah. went out wanted to do this. And it's so funny, Inez, because Mm -hmm. she went on to YouTube and taught herself to wrap her hands. Oh, really? She went (laughs) went on to YouTube hours and hours, like it was her job. Mm -hmm. She'd wrap her hands and then she started wrapping other people's hands. And then she knew how to do everything else a cut person does. And Mm -hmm. then she drove uh, 16 hours every weekend down to Vegas to be able to go down there at this gym and practice this. Like this is somebody that wanted to make a better self or better life for themselves. And actually remember we talked about intent. She didn't have the just the intention. She acted on it. She did all these things that not a normal person would do drive all these hours, hours of YouTube videos. And then she's doing what she wants. So Mm -hmm. I'm talking to all these people from so many different backgrounds. You know, Christina Zanato is a wonderful woman. She does shark diving, cave diving, (laughs) all these stock traders, you name it. And all these people like, none of these people just happened to be a successful stock trader or none of these people were, you know, an army veteran that got blown up in a roadside bomb and decided to feel sorry for himself. You know, some Mm -hmm. people that we've had on here, they didn't just start like that. You know, they, the, the gentleman, Brian Fleming, you know, we we know know, (laughs) he's an incredible person to talk to and he could have felt sorry for himself and not helped anybody else. And he could have wallowed in self pity for the rest of his life, but he chose Mm -hmm. to make a difference all of the people that I've talked to, they didn't just wind up with what they have. However, they quantified success. They didn't wind up with that success. They said, I want to go do this. How do I do it? Well, I may not know actually how to do it, but I know I want to do it. So I'm just going to keep on putting one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. And I'm going to just figure out as I go. And I tell you, that's what I've been doing with the podcast as well. I've been Mm -hmm. just figuring it out you know, my audio and video has slowly been getting better. I've been able to slowly articulate myself better and catch <laughs> myself things and just be a better host. But all of these things, you just have to start. Like um, Jacob Harden for episode, I think 16 is a chiropractor. He mm-hmm. didn't, he's wildly successful on Instagram now has probably like 600, 600,000 followers. Mm-hmm. And he just started well, obviously with zero. Like right. you don't wind up, you don't just get a 600,000, right. you know, account. So and he has, and now he's traveling and it's not even doing chiropractic, uh, practicing. I don't even know how to say it in that tense. He's not a <laughs> chiropractor, just a chiropractor anymore, but he's doing this physical therapy. See, I didn't go to college, but I'm still making it happen. Like, <laughs> but now he's like traveling around the country and the world and doing physical therapy for yeah. everybody. And just, and the thing is, is it just doesn't start and stop with you. We can better ourselves and I wanted to better myself, but I realized it was way bigger than me. It was on a global scale. Mm -hmm. You're reaching 
people on your YouTube channel on a global scale. I'm reaching people on my um, podcast on a global scale. And once yeah. I also realized all of these things we talked about that I discovered about myself in the Navy, once I discovered these things about myself and then I discovered that it doesn't stop there, like there's a, a huge level up from that where you need to help other people. Don't keep the information for yourself. So all yeah. these things started finally coming together. So I'm very, very specific about the people that I pick and I ensure that they are not just, I don't care if you're successful. I care if you're successful and you're humble about it and you're teaching other people mm -hmm. what you've learned being an honest, good human being. So those are the type of people I talk to and yeah. I never want to yeah. stop talking to them. And you're not going to run out of them because there really are, you know, as cynical yeah. as the world may be, there's so many wonderful, positive, high energy people that are willing who to share their resources or their wisdom or support you and, you know, and even strangers too, which is amazing. It is amazing. And I think that's why we should strive to be good human beings for ourselves and for just people in the world, because you're a stranger to somebody and even genuinely asking somebody on the side of the road, you know, how they're doing in yeah. a manner like if you're like, too many, and I'm, I'm talking not in like a crazy, creepy way, like, hey, like, how's it going? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've had too many people that, and everybody's has a bad day, and you have no idea what's going on in somebody's life, right. but when you're past somebody and, you know, smile at them, say hi, like, hey, how's it going? Like, you're not crazy. You're just being a good human being, mm -hmm. and maybe that that because nobody smiled at him or her all day long, and that was just, the, they're like, if one, I just want one person to smile at me today, and it might sound crazy, and it might sound like it doesn't matter, but it does matter, and that's what I'm trying to relate to everybody, is that the things we do and we say matter, and they matter way more than you think they do. They do. Absolutely. Inversely, too, negatively. If, like, you're being negative, and you're saying, you know, screw you to the guy on the sidewalk, or mm -hmm. whatever like that, like, I try to control myself in my car, much like we all do. Like, I need to work on that, too. But yeah. I'm trying to be aware of that. But I'm just saying, like, it works on both ends. You can be a positive person. You can admit this positivity, and it catches like wildfire. But on the inverse, if you're a negative person, you will thus influence the person's people around you negatively. So mm -hmm. you need to be very cognizant of what you say about yourself and you need to be cognizant about what you say to other people because I want to set a good example for myself and I want to set a good example for my wife and my friends and my coworkers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's being, you know, being that role model, you know, of how you how you want, you know, how you see the world. Because I think, you know, e even the bitter people, if you like just smile at someone. It's hard not to smile back, even if they think you're crazy. <laughs> you know, they might yeah. smile at your thoughts. But you know, it, it does generate good energy. It absolutely does, and that's a good point to make as well. Is energy? Energy is huge. Oh, yeah. I love energy, and it's it's another thing. I'm I'm so I've been so excited to learn about more about energy because I tell you, when I get up and I I get up that early and I don't snooze, it just gives me like all right. I, I kick snooze's ass. So like, let's, I got some energy. Let's go into the next thing. And then, you know, it's consistency and energy and positivity. Like all these things are so connected. But when you do one, it's a little bit easier to do the other one and the other one and the other one. And you learn that all these things are connected. But having this positive energy and emitting this energy, just having this, you know, radiance about you that people recognize that when you're trying to be an honest and yeah. good human like that people recognize that so it's it just goes back to like we were talking about leadership and mm -hmm. that's leading by example with the person you want to be and showing other people that you can be this person yeah, well, yeah. So, all right so tell me where everybody could find find you i know you have like multiple outlets correct yeah and that goes back to social media i try to use uh mostly anything and okay. everything but my main thing is my Instagram. It's Christoph Lewis, K-R-I-S-T-O-F-L-E-W-I-S. And on my page, I post content daily. I'm very interactive. I talk to everybody that's yeah. on my, that follows me. And there on my page, you can email me if you want to be on the podcast or you want to talk to me. Mm. Or you can direct message me. And then you can also find the link to my iTunes in there as well for the podcast. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show this time. It was really enjoyable talking to you. I've absolutely loved it, really. I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time, and you're always a pleasure to talk to, and you're such a gracious host, and it's really cool to be on the receiving end of this and, and yeah. help contribute, you know, pay it back to you as well. 